Some cabinet features are best demonstrated in darker conditions and some in the light. So I'll be switching back and forth between day and night shots depending on what I'm demonstrating. My system is a quadraphonic one, which these days would be described as surround sound. There are four loudspeakers, each consisting of a 15 inch woofer in the lower section and four 5 by 7 inch squawkers and one 2 inch tweeter in the upper section. The tweeter you can see in the top left of the lower section is not used. The active tweeter is mounted in the centre of the upper section's underside, facing down onto a wooden cone that reflects its sound 360 degrees around the enclosure. The lower woofer and upper treble sections are driven by separate amplifiers to allow balancing of the lows and highs. Central to my system is the Touch PC, which, in conjunction with an embedded computer that I call my Switchbox, controls most of the equipment in my system. Because my system is so complex, for anyone other than me it would be difficult to know how to operate it. For example, you want to pause the music, but which of the over a dozen devices is it coming from? With the Touch PC in control, it knows what the source is, so just touching the pause button will cause it to send a pause command to the appropriate piece of equipment. Most things that you can do on the touchscreen can also be done by remote control. As well as the volume slider and up-down buttons, I have programmed four volume presets for the most commonly occurring listening situations, and, of course, a mute button. For selecting which of the dozen or so inputs will provide music, which of the half a dozen or so recording devices will record it, if desired, and which set of speakers it will play through, the Touch PC has a configuration screen. So by selecting a music source, the main screen transport controls, play, pause, skip, etc., if applicable, will operate on that source device. If you select radio, the main screen displays station buttons from which you can select which station to tune to, and the touch PC will tune the JVC receiver to that station. A clock button displays a digital clock derived from the PC's system clock. For the tech heads interested in the touch PC's specifications, it has a 486 CPU running at 100 MHz with 16 MB of RAM and a 124 MB solid state hard drive. For the younger tech heads who don't understand anything that isn't prefixed with a giga, I'll convert those figures for you. The CPU frequency is 0.1 GHz, RAM is 0.016 GB, and the solid state drive is 0.124 GB. The PC runs DOS 6.22 with Microsoft Network Client version 3 and Farlap DOS Extender. I wrote the control program in C and compiled it with MetaWare High C C++ and MetaWindow Graphics Library. Let's do an equipment tour, working in a zigzag path from the bottom to the top. Note that you'll see a number of devices that I have a pair of. This is because they are stereo units, so I need two for my four channels. These two Dolby noise reduction units are for the open reel tape deck. This Onkyo surround receiver is just used as a four channel amplifier for the treble sections of the four speakers. But this JVC surround receiver does more than just amplify. It also does some of the input selection, it does the surround DTS decoding, and I've split the preamp and the main amp sections so I can use the main amps for just the woofers. Next comes the all important switch box, a device I designed, built and programmed to switch various inputs to various outputs, but which also performs other essential functions. I'll explain a lot more about this unit in the third of this series of videos. Then we have a combined CD player and mini disc recorder, which requires no further explanation. Ignoring a small storage drawer, we move up to the quadraphonic open reel tape recorder, which is paired with the Dolby noise reduction units we saw a moment ago. Then comes an 80cm TV, an important appliance for many families, but not really my thing. I mostly prefer to listen to music. In these narrow slots, we have a PVR. That's personal video recorder, i.e. a digital video recorder. Then a slide-out keyboard for the occasional debugging of the touch PC. And then a DVD player that also plays DVD-A and SACD. 
Above that is this CD4 decoder, which has nothing to do with compact discs. CD4 stands for Compatible Discrete 4 Channel, and was the ultimate in quadraphonic technology for vinyl records, decoding four discrete channels from a stereo compatible LP. To its left is the squeeze box, my primary music source. It streams audio via the Wi Fi network from my music server PC, which lives in a room below this one. It also provides a wireless bridge between that PC, which I also use for program development, and the touch PC in this hi fi system. These two DBX 4BX audio expanders restore some of the dynamic range lost by compression for music recorded in the old analog days, i.e., tape and records. They split the audio into three bands and expand each separately then recombine the three bands into one. Those three bands are indicated by the top three bar graphs. They also have impact restoration, which attempts to restore transients, such as drum hits and loud guitar plucks, which would be crushed by limiters in the analog recording days. This is indicated by the bottom bar graph. I would really love to have two 5BX units instead of the 4BXs, but having been made in only a limited number before the DBX company went bust, they are as rare as a nun in a bikini, and thus way out of my price range. So I've given up hope of ever owning even one, let alone two. But if you happen to have one, feel free to leave it to me in your will. Then two graphic equalizers that are infrared remote controllable. Their primary function in my system is for loudness contours. As I drop the playback volume from loud to soft, you will see the different loudness compensation curves being switched in. These curves are pre-programmed by me and stored in the graphic equalizers using their custom curve facility. In the top corner is a Roland 8-channel digital audio recorder mixer. I use it for transcribing analog quadraphonic sources, CD4 records, quad tapes and SACD discs, to 4-track digital, which I then encode into DTS FLAC format for my music server for playback through the squeeze box. In the middle is the touch PC, which we've already looked at. And finally, a record turntable used in conjunction with the CD4 decoder viewed earlier for transcribing CD4 LPs to digital via the Roland recorder. In designing and building the cabinet, I incorporated a few special features. Let's look at those. The touch PC has been mounted at approximately my eye height so that when standing in front of it, I am at the optimum viewing angle of 90 degrees. But what happens when I'm sitting in my central listening chair with my head much lower? Well, a simple press of a remote button and the screen tilts down to match my new eye height. Another press of the button and it returns. Some equipment requires human interaction, for example to load a disc in the DVD player, or mount and thread a tape on the tape deck. So when doing that at night, a little extra lighting would be appreciated. So when I select a source or recorder that requires intervention, the touch PC automatically turns on an LED strip in that compartment, in this example the tape deck. It also switches on the power to that equipment via relays on my miscellaneous driver board if its power is not remote controllable, like the tape deck and Dolby units. And while we're talking about the tape deck, decks of this type and vintage were never made with infrared remote control. However, this particular deck was made with a facility for a wired remote. So of course I've wired that socket to my miscellaneous driver board so I can remote control the deck via the computers. Like so. Play. Pause. Rewind, etc. Behind the panorama at the top of the cabinet, which occupied this wall before the cabinet existed, and there was no other wall free for it, so it had to go on the cabinet, is a twin-tube fluorescent light with a DALI ballast. DALI is an acronym for Digitally Addressable Lighting Interface. So this light fitting is controllable by the touch PC too. I've programmed 10 brightness steps from 10 to 100%, selectable either from a touch PC menu or the remote control. Here's 10%. And here's 100%. There's also a brightness preset specifically for TV viewing, providing a soft indirect light when watching TV, like this. The cabinet is not screwed to the wall, but you can't tip it over by pulling on it. Watch. But to facilitate wiring or rewiring or repairing of the system, 
I wanted access to the back of the cabinet. The cabinet is made with wheels underneath and a thrust bearing in the front right corner. So, I stick my fingers in her slot and tickle her G-spot, which turns her on and then she'll open wide for me. This is achieved with a pressure sensor inside the cabinet side where my fingers go, which triggers a triple five timer to turn on the electric strike at the top rear that then allows the cabinet to be wheeled away from the wall. As you'd expect, the rear of the cabinet is a mess of wires, and in the centre is a wiring diagram showing how everything is connected. Note that all the wires on the diagram are numbered. To make it easy to wire or rewire the system, the cables are numbered too. Now, if we have a look at the top of the cabinet, hidden behind the panorama is the miscellaneous driver's board that I designed to go between the computers and various other devices. Here's a view of the board before anything was connected to it. At its heart is a serial to 32-bit parallel driver chip that controls things like the power relays, lead strips, tape deck remote, electric strike, etc. The Perspex cover protects it from dust and some insects and keeps incautious hands away from the 230 volts that goes to the power relays. At the top you can see the fluorescent light for indirect room lighting. Towards the right, in that wooden enclosure, is the windscreen wiper motor and micro switch that tilts the touch PC. And at the far right is the mess of mains cables, both 120 volt and 230 volt, since some of my equipment was purchased overseas. And finally the mains relay that switches the whole system on or off.